Geometry is used to describe the world around us and um, things that we can measure, things like distance, um, angles, degrees, different things like that. Uh, but all of that starts on three words that we call undefined terms. Um, and those three things are things you probably are familiar with. They don't have a formal definition, but um, they're kind of just standard building blocks of geometry. Uh, the first one is a point. Now, a point um, has no dimension. Okay? That's an important thing to remember. Uh, it, what it does show, it shows us location. It tells us where something is at. Now, this could be on a grid. It could be on a map somewhere. Um, but it's just telling us where something is. Now, the way we describe it or the way we draw it, we simply just put a point here. And we name it with a capital letter. So this right here, that would be describing point A. All right. Uh, the next undefined term is a line. Now, a line um, is one dimensional. Uh, and the way we draw this is we draw a line with two arrows on the end, on each end. Um, we would describe it as going, goes on forever without end in both directions. Now, to name a line, we pick two points on this line. Okay? There's infinitely many points, or you just pick any point. Uh, we do have to have two. Um, we'll call this A and this one B. All right? And so we would write this as, um, you could say line AB. Right? You can also just write two capital letters. They do have to be capitalized. And then you draw a smaller line on top of that, on top of that, with two arrows on each end. Okay. Now there is a third way to name a line, and the other way is that you'll see some kind of cursive letter. In this case, I did line L as an alternate way of describing or naming this line. And something important that you need to remember, you need to know, is that through any two points, there is exactly one line. We'll talk a little bit about this later in a different lesson. So it is something you do need to remember um, about lines and points on a line. All right, the third undefined term is plane. Now a plane has two dimensions. Okay. And usually when we draw a plane, um, a plane, let me just write it, it goes on forever. in all directions. Okay. Um, so like this surface here, this whiteboard, would be considered a plane. So usually the way it's drawn is you'll see it as a parallelogram. Okay. Something like that. But the idea is that it's understood and it's implied that it goes forever in all of these directions. Okay. Now, um, to name a plane, you have to pick three points that are not on the same line, uh, and you would just name them A, B, C. Okay, and so I would call this plane A, B, C. The other way to name it is you'll see some other cursive letter here. Uh, uh, let's do an R here. Okay. And so you would say, it doesn't have to be capitalized, it has to be a, an in cursive or a script letter, and it'll be plain R, something like that. Okay. All right, now similar to uh, a line, a plane has something else you need to know about it as well, it's something important that we will talk again about in, a, in another lesson. Um, and it just says that through any three points not on the same line, there is exactly one plane. Okay, that is important. You do need to remember that and write that down.
Uh, two other vocabulary words that you do need to write down, and you do need to know what they are, is collinear points, which means points that are on the same line, and coplanar points, points that are on the same plane. Uh, this first example, it says, the first part says give two other names for line PQ and plane R. So um, looking at this, here's P, here's Q, so this line is going straight up and down. Um, the name for that one, uh, or another name for line PQ uh, would be, um, if I just replace the letters and I did line QP, if I transpose them. But um, also we could call it line N, okay, because it has that cursive script letter up there on top. Um, another name for plane R, I need three non-collinear points, so three points that are not on the line. Um, so I could call it plane um, SVT. Okay. I can't call it SPT because those are on the same line. But I can say plane SVT. You could also call it plane, um, I don't know, we could change up the letters, we could say BTS. That would be another example, or another way to name plane R. For example, B, it says name three points that are collinear. So um, those are three points that are on the same line. That would be S, P, and T. Right. Make sure that you're using capital letters, otherwise it is not right. And then name four points that are coplanar. So the other question, or the other part of this question, I would need four points that are on the same plane, but not necessarily in the same line. So that would be S, P, T, and V. Uh, the next definition we have is a segment, or you might say line segment, and a segment consists of two endpoints, A and B, and all the points between A and B. So a segment will look something like this. You'll have a point here, we'll call that A, and we'll have another point here. And if you connect them, all the points in between them, that gives you a segment. Okay. Now, um, to name it or to write it, you would say you put the two letters together, and you put a bar on top. So this would be a way of saying segment AB. You could also flip the two letters and call it segment BA. Both of those mean the same thing. This word is ray, and the ray consists of one endpoint and all linear points that lie on the same side of A as B. So if we look at what we have for our line, we have two points A and B that are on this line. Um, with a ray, I can start my ray this way, and so I just have a ray AB. So the way we would name that and we would write this is we'd have a capital A, capital B, and our arrow would point to the right. All right. If I take this and I go back the other direction, so if I have A here, B here, and I go back to my line, and this time instead of erasing this arrow, I take off this arrow, this ray is going to be ray BA. Okay. Notice that I put the B first. So on a ray, it's important that you always start with whatever the endpoint is. The endpoint letter is the letter that goes first. Also notice that the arrow is always pointing, uh, the arrow in the name is always pointing towards the right. So it's important to know that ray AB is not the same as um, ray BA. Those are two different rays. Okay. The direction on these two matter. Um, now we have opposite rays and the definition of this is if a point C lies on line AB, so we're starting using notation between A and B, then ray CA and ray CB are opposite rays. So what this tells you, this first part, um, is you have this line segment, or this line, excuse me, A is on one side, B is on the other side, and C is somewhere between them. Um, not necessarily in the middle. Okay. So what happens if C is between these two, I create two opposite rays. So if I cover this up, I have a ray CA going this direction, and if I go the other way, I have a ray CB that goes in the exact opposite direction. Right. This will be important in later lessons. You will need to know this. For example, two, we have um, two parts. We have part A, this is given another name, for segment GH. All right. 
So segment GH would be this piece from point G to point H. Um, with segments, we can reverse the order of the, the endpoints, and it's still the same segment. So it's okay for me to say segment HG. Um, when it's the rays, though, remember that that's when the endpoint matters. So name all rays with endpoint J. So from J going in either direction. So one of my rays would be um, ray JE. Okay. I would also have ray JF. Then we would have ray JG and ray JH. Remember that, the, remember that the arrow always has to go towards the right as far as the name is concerned. Then it says which of these are opposite rays. All right, so from J, E and F are on the same line. So those two, ray J, E, is opposite to ray J, F. Those would be opposite rays. And then we would say J, H is opposite is opposite ray of J, G. Okay. Right, on this last piece, we have some little bit more terminology just to kind of describe what an intersection is and what it looks like. Two or more geometric figures intersect when they have one or more points in common. The intersection of the figures is the set of points the figures have in common. So, um, something to remember is that if, when two lines intersect, their intersection is one point. So, here I have line. M, let's call this one line N. Okay, when two lines intersect, they have this one intersection point in common. Okay, that would be one example. Um, the other example I could have is I could have two planes that intersect. So, if I have one going this way, and let's say I have one coming up this direction. Okay. These would be, so I have two things that are kind of coming in different directions. I would have an intersection point here and an intersection point here. Okay, so anything between those, if I connect them, that would be the intersection. So the intersection here would actually be a line. All right, so again, um, if two lines intersect, their intersection is a point. If two planes intersect, their intersection is a line. That's going to be very important for you to remember.